I wasn't just Napoli's hero. I was Napoli. I wasn't an inspiration to Argentine. I was the main face of Argentine. And that was my strength. And after everything that I've been through in my journey, now is the time to tell you all about it. I'm Diego Maradona, and this is the story of my life. Football is all about tricks. Letting your opponent think you're going right and then you go left. And I was the king of tricks. Wanna know how I joined Boca Juniors? That was the first trick of my life. I was the best dribbler in the streets. I was so good that my first coach believed I was an old elf. No one believed I was just a kid because I was killing it at football. And that's why River Plate wanted me to join their team. But Boca Juniors was running in my blood. The only problem is Boca Juniors weren't even considering me because they couldn't afford me. One day, a journalist asked me if I've signed was ever played yet. And I was like, uh, not yet. I'm in negotiations with Boca Juniors right now. My answer put a lot of pressure on the Boca Juniors management and they didn't negotiate with me. And they signed me. With Boca Juniors, I was so loved by the fans. One time, the ultras were mad at the results. So they broke into the field during rehearsals and insulted half of the team. When I stood up to them, they said, you stay out of it. They don't pass the ball to you, and that's why we're losing. And thanks to the fans, I became the leader of Boca and Argentine. And I knew I could take this responsibility. And because I'm the leader, and the king, I would do anything to make my team win. Even if it meant scoring a goal with my hands and running around in celebration to convince everyone it was valid. But I'm not just the king of tricks. I'm the king, period. Give me the ball, and I'll have a lot of fun. If we're in the streets, I'll have a lot of fun. If we're playing in front of a crowd of 100,000 in the World Cup, I'll dribble half the team and score and have a lot of fun. And thanks to this skill, I became the most expensive player in history. But then the worst deal of my career happened. Barcelona, a psychopath of a club president. Whenever we won a game, he would block me in the photos. And when we'd lose, he'd blame it all on me. And for the first time ever, I was the one being tricked. I had no choice but to run. But before leaving, I had to leave a mark on all of Spain. When the King of Spain was in attendance, I beat the hell out of every Bilbao player that was in my way. King of Spain, Juan Carlos, if you're listening to this, I'm sorry I have to see that. But the Spanish players had to know who they were dealing with. After those attacks, no other club wanted to sign me. I had no choice but to go back to Napoli. Back in Napoli, I became the king again. Of course, I loved winning the World Cup with my country, but winning the league with Napoli, that was the best achievement of my life. In Napoli, I felt at home. At home, I felt peace. I had a good time, and so did all of Napoli. But what started as a fairy tale ended with a tragedy. In 1990, the World Cup took place in Italy, and thanks to me, Argentine made it to the semifinals, and the stars aligned for us to play against Napoli. Where? In Napoli Stadium. Believe it or not, half of Napoli's fans cheered for Argentine just for me, but unfortunately, Everything changed when I scored a penalty, causing Argentine to make it to the final. At the final, Italian fans started booing during Argentine's national anthem, and I cussed them out. And the media destroyed me, revealing to the world my use of drugs and steroids, and that I was friends with mafia members. I went from a god to a devil. They suspended me for years and ruined my career. They took football away from me, and football was my life. And that was the story of my life. I'm Diego Maradona, the greatest player of all time. Some of you may deny that, and some may say I could have lasted longer. But one thing's for sure, after I was gone, Napoli never won a league, and Argentine never won a World Cup. Yeah.